Hi folks, so today I would like to introduce to you a handful of um, online projects which I think are particularly wonderful. Uh, they all aim to do the same job but for different places on the internet. They're all open source and they're all sort of community built and I'd like to, and, and many of you guys are actually going to be um, quite familiar with them I'm sure today, but they're definitely worth a mention um, because I think they provide like a very a useful um, tool, uh, provide themselves as a very useful tool on the internet, as well as uh, being an example of a, a sort of a, a Linux and open source approach to problems on the internet. Now I'll get into specifics once I introduce to you the first of these services. This is Hex DSL's YouTube channel on a platform called Invidious. Uh, so I've just chosen HexDSL because he's just a good friend of mine and he's just, you know, I'm just using it as a bit of an example. But um, basically what NVIDIUS does is provides a front end to YouTube uh, from which you can actually just watch videos, browse channels, subscribe to channels, uh, and um, you can subscribe to them through the NVIDIUS website itself. Or uh, you can uh, subscribe using RSS feeds. Um, uh, an RSS feed as well, which I think is particularly neat. So this is it. This is just Hex's uh, YouTube channel, but it's done in 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 Nvidia's has a light mo um, light mode and a dark mode. So um, there's that, which I think is of course particularly important. It's a lot more lightweight than the YouTube website as well. Uh, it doesn't have all that tracking. It doesn't have all that advertising. Um, and it just provides a bit more user freedom when it comes to browsing YouTube, which um, I think is really good. And I think there is a bit of a, a free and open source approach to um, to the problems that YouTube has given us in terms of that it's not exactly the most ethical service going. It's not exactly the most ethical piece of software when it when it tracks you and records so much data on you. Um, and um, and also, of course, that it is a very heavy website. Like if you're watching YouTube videos on an old computer, it's going to struggle. Um, and this is again, it provides a bit of an alternative. Now, I will say that there, you know, there is an ethical argument to be said that when you're watching uh, YouTube videos through the Nvidia's player, that you're not supporting the content creators um, by, uh, you know, watching their advertising or um, upping their watch time, which helps their videos get discovered on the YouTube algorithms and all that. You're not feeding into the YouTube ecosystem. Some of you will consider that a good thing, but also because you're kind of doing it without the content creator's consent, um, it can be seen as a little bit of a, of a, you know, an ethical gray area there, but that's going to be one I'm going to leave up to you. For what it's worth, folks, if you do want to watch my videos through Invidious, which you can do, I'm perfectly fine with it. I, you know, freely give my consent there. Um, but, you know, you know, do it in the, in, the, in the knowledge that like, you know, watch time on YouTube, um, does contribute to, to videos getting watched and discovered. All things considered, I do my YouTube videos for fun nowadays. I don't really care about the view count. It's just nice to, um, you know, I, I post to PeerTube, I post to all the other places. So it's um, it's all pretty good from, from that point of view, just for me though. Um, but um, but yeah, I think Invidious is like a really good service because it, 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 it gives you a much better front end to YouTube, which gives the end user a lot more control. And I think this sort of fits in with the free and open source ethos a little bit uh, better because it sort of takes a problem and then sort of bridges the gap to make it more accessible to, to more people in that community. Um, it's not like um, in other sort of facets of technology where the community will just stamp their feet and start yelling until their platform is supported or until something comes to, to them. We in sort of the Linux space and the open source space actually will go out and we will bridge the gap. We will make things compatible with our way of doing things. Another good example is Wine for playing video games on Linux. It's like, yeah, we're not going to um, wait for all of these video game companies to actually sort of start porting games to Linux. We're a small market share. It's unlikely to happen, especially in uh, profit, you know, in your more profit driven models of making computer games. So we're going to bridge the gap. We're going to build some open source software, which then, um, you know, makes games that are not made for our platform available for us. And it gives most users the most freedom because it gives the developers the freedom to develop on the platform that they choose to de sort of develop for. And it gives us uh, end users here on Linux the um, the option of playing on the platform that we want to play it with. Everybody wins as far as I can tell that. 
Uh, and this is a little bit with, with Invidious um, because it's like, yes, you know, the end user gets to watch videos in a more, um, you know, sort of in a more favorable environment. And then the, um, the content creator doesn't, you know, they can upload to, to YouTube as they see fit. Uh, it's, you know, it might be more suitable for uh, for for getting views for, for their videos. Uh, it might be that it's not exactly practical for, for us to sort of ask all of these content creators on YouTube to actually start posting to places like Peertube and other video sharing platforms as well. So this, again, it provides a bit of a bridge. It provides a bit of a middle ground. And I think that's really quite good. So uh, leaning into that, uh, I'm also going to demonstrate to you Bibliogram, which does a very similar thing, but here on Instagram. Um, so it's a very simple um, interface here. Now I am not actually on the main instance, which is bibliogram.art. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, if you go down to the bottom of a bibliogram page, there are several instances. The fact that this applies for Invidious and Bibliogram as well is that um, you can put this, because this is free and open source software, you can install it on your own uh, server and then use it as you wish. It's you know freely available and that's one of the great things about it. And it's not just, you don't have these one instances. Uh, you can you can choose from, from several instances. And this is a, a secondary instance of Bibliogram. And the reason I'm, uh, I'm selecting it today is because it enables RSS feed. So you can subscribe to an Instagram account using your RSS reader, whereas with uh, bibliogram.art, they've disabled that. So um, the, I, I'm not entirely certain why. There might be, it might be a case of like server load um, or, or, you know, it might be that it's just, yeah, too much of a load on the server or it could be any number of reasons as well. So um, yeah, like bibliogram um, on uh, on uh, snowpitar.org seems to uh, seems to allow RSS feeds. So that's uh, that's pretty good there as well. Um, and uh, you can go down to the bottom and you can look for what is it? Um, other bi other bibliogram instances, and then it'll come up and it'll give you some like uh, let you know all the ins and outs of it and um, and all of that. So that's uh, that's pretty good there. Um, now, um, I will uh, actually say, if you go to the, uh, contact the developer, and I just want to let you guys, you know, give you a bit of a heads up on, particularly with Bibliogram, because the um, uh, the developer um, says on their platform here, um, uh, because the, pla uh, the developer does not have a reliable source of income, so donations are very much appreciated. Um, if any of you guys do happen to have some spare crypto lying around, this is a nice project to donate to. I don't usually necessarily say things like that, but given that um, this is an up and coming service uh, from a developer who seems to have like gone above and beyond the call of duty to actually get their software and, and, and solve a problem out there, I just thought I might uh, might sort of flag it up. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, a Bibliogram, this is great um, because uh, take again, my good friend HexDSL as the example of the day, you can just type in his name, and then you've got all his history, right? Now, if I were to open up Hex's channel on Instagram or Hex's blog on Instagram, whatever, not log in because I do not have an Instagram account, scroll all the way down. Um, oh no, I can't view any more photos until I sign up for an Instagram account, which I think is really sleazy if I'm completely honest. So, uh, but not uh, not here. You can uh, check out everything that our good friend Hex has to offer. And as an aficionado of mildly amusing facial expressions, uh, I think this is a really good uh, solution to the particular problem. And when it comes to uh, Instagram, it doesn't have the same sort of algorithmic pressures that YouTube has. So uh, just from my point of view, I, I consider this to be a much more um, ethically um, uh, you know, ethically viable, ethically good, you know, uh, acceptable way of uh, way of approaching the problem. And if I'm completely honest, I don't care about Instagram as a company, but uh, end users, people that want to publish their photographs, they should be allowed to do it on the platform of their choice. My um, opinions and my ethics in this regard should not necessarily, you know, they shouldn't be imposed on people who just want to post up photos on a photo blog. So this again, it makes the best of both worlds. It gives the end user the opportunity to post up uh, photographs on platforms that they see fit. And it allows me to, to view those photographs um, and view that content uh, in a way that uh, that is, is, is suitable and, and um, ethically respecting to, to me and my values, which I think is really good. Again, this is a perfect opportunity um, or a perfect example rather of how free and open source software just um, just bridges that gap and provides more users with with more freedoms and more choices. And I think that's absolutely wonderful.
Okay, and on to the final of these services. Again, HexDSL. Uh, this is uh, Knitter.net. Uh, this uh, does what the other two did, but for Twitter. So if you do not have a Twitter account, but there are, for example, there's a website that you follow that perhaps doesn't have an RSS feed, but you want to follow updates, well, that's okay. Uh, but you know, if, if that website perhaps doesn't have an RSS feed, but updates on Twitter, well, then you can subscribe to their Twitter RSS feed. You can see little RSS feed up there in the, uh, the top right hand corner. And that, um, yeah, and that just comes through to your um, RSS reader as well. Uh, or you can just use it to just scan through Twitter feeds um, in, in, a, in a much nicer interface quite frankly. And all of these things, um, you know, you can you can then uh, press this little button at any time, which, you know, the little bird icon in the top right hand corner there, and that will just open it up in Twitter. So even if you do use Twitter or have a Twitter account, you can still use Knitter um, as you so wish because um, uh, because there's that easy switch across. Same thing with Invidious actually. If you were to uh, open up a video uh, in Invidious here, um, there is a, uh, so you've got Hex's big video up there, um, and then you can just do watch on YouTube. There's a little um, uh, link right there on the left-hand side just beneath the title. So, um, but yeah, Knitter.net does the same thing as the rest of them. If you want a open source, lightweight, dark themed uh, front end to Twitter and Twitter accounts, and the ability to follow Twitter accounts through an RSS um, reader, uh, then this is your option. This is wonderful. So yeah, uh, all in all, these three services, uh, Nvidia's, Bibliogram, and uh, Knitter.net um, are all uh, really good ways to sort of engage in your more corporate social media using free and open source bridges. Um, and and I, I think that is great. And um, yeah, allowing your content creators to publish in a way that, that suits them um, and also viewing content in a way that suits you. I think everybody wins here because the thing is, is that, you know, it, it isn't always um, a great thing to still sort of be, you know, stamping your feet and evangelizing people do the way, um, do things the way that you see fit when, um, you know, there could be very good reasons for uploading to YouTube. It might be the case that they, they don't know what PeerTube is. They don't know how to, um, you, you know, like uh, they don't know what instance to upload to and, you know, what the various policies are for each of, of, of the variances, various instances that PeerTube might offer, for example. You know, when, when you start getting into these kind of uh, technical solutions, it does require a little bit more application. And if you're just a content creator that just wants to upload cooking videos or something, then you know it's it's not really fair to put huge amounts of pressure on these people when they are just a you know that they're, they're just sort of following suit with with everyone else we can't expect everyone to go against the grain and um and it doesn't win you a lot of friends and allies when you start stamping your feet and demanding people see the world the same way that you do so um so i think that this is a perfect example or these are three perfect examples with how free and open source software provides more users with more freedoms, um, even though, you know, the, the the overall circumstances, no, they're not ideal. The world will never be ideal. And as such, um, we um, in the sort of the techie community can can make the best of it. And we can find these, uh, you know, interesting and hacky solutions that, uh, you know, basically provide everyone with some kind of uh, satisfaction, or at least that's how I view it. Um, you know, there's, there's not really uh, much to be gained with um, you know, ideological purity and um, and inflexibility, and um, and you know, like basically these open source solutions, they allow us to use the server space um, of, of of various corporations without actually having to feed into their data ecosystem, and I think that's a good thing. So um, you know, it's um, I like it. It seems like uh, some some really good services that f that um, that solve some some. Um, meaningful problems that I find. So uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And um, yeah, that's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.